Hello, welcome back to Otter Pop Culture. Today we're going to be going over the new EP from Kilani called While We Wait. And the theory that I have in this um, title is that it's more of a nod to while you're waiting for, our, for her new album coming out, you can take this little snap sample, little sample tray of her kind of music. And since she hasn't came out with the album since 2017, I kind of assume that it's its purpose of this title. Um, my relationship with Kalani is that I haven't really got deep, deep into her. I, I've seen tons of, like, features that she's been in, but I've never, I've, I've, I've gotten to maybe, a, to like, two songs that she's been, that she's done, especially the, um, uh, what's it, Sexy Savage album. Like, I've got, like, I started listening to it, but I kind of, like, trailed off, and... It's just, I was, I'm slowly getting to her, and I felt like this was a great start, is to get into, like, a nice little EP that gives you a sample of what she is, a, what, who she is about, and then kind of go backwards from there. So, in this video, we're going to go through the whole song, the whole EP, and talk about, like, the background of the songs, um, what I thought about the songs, what I liked about the songs, what I didn't like about the songs, and, um, be sure to leave a comment below, tell me what you thought about it, and don't forget to subscribe. And let's get started. So the first song is Steps or Footsteps by um, featuring uh, Music Soul Child. I actually heard of music. I've been around Music Soul Child's been around a lot. Like I've, he's been around in my life a lot. And he's one of the he's one of the, like the veterinary uh, uh, veterinarians for veterinarians a veteran for like soul music and everything. So he's been around for a long time. So it's really cool that she was able to get one of like somebody that's been that big on here. Um, and this one kind of cool because it has like an I the icebox by um, Omorion kind of like sampled into it from she sings the lyrics from. Um, I like this song because it kind of get so the story of the song is pretty much that she is that they're kind of like in a weird impasse like this kind of like they're trying to figure out what's going on with they're realize well actually they're realizing that they are not on the same page exactly because they didn't when they jumped into this relationship, they didn't really know what they were looking for. And so now that they realize that they, I'm sure they thought like, oh, I'm jumping into this relationship. I don't know what I'm looking for. Maybe they'll figure out when I'm in it. But obviously that did not work out. And so the thought was, I'm leaving footprints for you, footprints for you to follow. Since we still know we care for, for each other, we can still, maybe in the future, we can get back into this once we figure out what we want. And so I like that. And so we're starting off immediately with deep, Lyrics and I kind of like that. Number two is too deep. Speaking of deep, um, and the background with this one is pretty much that it used to be it was supposed to be a rap. Uh, it's supposed to be a rap song first, and it was written by uh, Trinidad James, um, and so he had it, and then he she put her own little spin to it. I think she wrote her own little, like add her own little lyrics, lyrics to it too, kind of spin it off to more of her style, and she turned into an R&B song, and it's, it's a really good, cool sound. I want to actually dig in and find uh, Trinidad's version to see, like, the similarities and everything. Um, in this song, the, the, to the topic is pretty much how her side, like, guy or girl is pretty much getting a little too deep involved in her, where it's just like she feels like she argues with him, with, with him or her more than she does with her partner. So she's kind of realizing, like, if we're arguing arguing over this and we literally were just here to fuck, like, obviously we shouldn't be a thing. Like, this should probably stop because we're getting way too deep and we're involving emotions into this where it doesn't need to be. So I thought, I like that. So we're already got another deep one. And so we go into number three, which is Nanya featuring um, Dom Kennedy. And this one's pretty much about the um, a jealous ex who he's been keeping tabs on her, wondering where she goes, asking her friends about her and everything like that. And I like this one, and I feel like this is the first time you get to it. Well, the you get into like, so I like to talk about this because I really love about this album or this EP is that they she opens a book to have the rapper or a feature person like have their own say into it whether they agree with what she's do what she's talking about or not and so i liked how she we kind of get a full story a full whole story in one song and i think that's kind of cool we did it with footsteps when uh, music came in he talked about his side of it how he feels about what's going on obviously they both agree um and nanya 
is the opposite. He more of a disagree, but kind of re realize that he is the same. So he's he's pretty much uh, Dom because the jealous ex in his rap verse and talks about how he knows that he's kind of creepy about this and everything, but he still is involved in her and stuff like that. So I thought it was kind of cool. Um, Number four is my favorite song off of this EP, which is Morning Glory, which just has like a 90s sound to it, which just falls into my theory about how I felt about like how music is kind of evolving into different things. Like, so we, for the longest time, for the past two or three years, and even more than that, we had like a, a huge wave of just 80s reference, 80s sampling and 80s sound and like if you listen to Tr Tr Troy Sivan or listen to Taylor Swift, you know they all they all have a little '80s sound to them because '80s was a big thing to like reference to, you know. But now I've noticed that we've moved on from '80s to '90s now, so we have like her with her '90s sound. We have other people with a '90s sound too, and it's kind of exciting to see. Like Charlie um, XCX has her 1999, but um. So yeah, so we have that kind of thing, and then we move on, and we see that she apparently was supposed to put like a sample. The original, the original version of this song is it had a sample of Waterfalls by TLC, but apparently they weren't really sure. They didn't really get like an approval from it yet, so they didn't release it. So by the time they did release this version, um, Left Eye's sister actually said like, you know, I know this is kind of late, but like I really, if you want to release the one with a sample in it. I totally approve, I would love to hear it, blah, blah, blah. So I'm kind of excited because I wonder if they're gonna have, they're just gonna release it on like Spotify or something like that so we can actually hear it. Because I think that'd be kind of cool to have that sampling. I have love Waterfalls and that'd be a great example. Um, Morning Glory is about pretty much the um, self-love, like not self-love, self-beauty and how like, how she's very proud of how she looks anyway. And she, there's a nerve wracking moment and when you when you come home when you come home with another person and if you have like makeup on or you have a wig or something like that it gets a little it like you get a little it gets a little nervous because you want like you want you shown this like beautiful face this beautiful like look image that you have for like like out in the world so when you take all the eyelashes and take off the wig and take off the makeup and everything you are a different person you know oh you're the same person but you're physically a different person and so there's a lot there's times where you could get some like some people will not be into it they're like mm, I kind of like you and you had your makeup on and that's all I'm actually interested in and they're t pretty shallow you know but she's kind of puts a foot down she's like if you don't want this you probably should just go you know like there's no point of you being here if you don't have if you can't love me for all of me you know and it, it's kind of cool she says if you can't more if you can't love my good night you don't deserve my morning glory and I kind of like that sound I kind of like how she proudly presents that it's kind of cool it gives you it's very self-empowering um number five is feels which is one of the singles that came out i don't really care for it i thought it was pretty meh i it just sounds very generic it sounds very it's radio appropriate i i'm cool for it for radio wise but it's just it's very generic for all for going through four songs of deep deep sound like deep deep lyrics and intent and like very relatable lyrics feels is kind of bland it's just, it feels like a break you know so number six is Nights Like This featuring Ty Dolla Sign. I actually do like this song. I love Ty Dolla Sign in this. Um, so in this one, he, she actually features a female subject in this, like out loud, where the other ones didn't really have it. I think, I think Too Deep might have had it because she kind of, she kept saying side thing instead of side chick or side guy, you know? side dude or whatever that people call their side person that's a male. Um, we usually just call them tricks. Um, so in this kind of thing, she's pretty much talking about how she, this, this female subject is kind of leading her on. She's trying to date, she's dating her and she's involving herself with her, but she doesn't feel like she's really getting the commitment that she wants, you know, and apparently she, this person is kind of like teasing her around and everything, and she wants to do. She wants to be involved more. She wants to be move it the the stage to the next level, but the other one doesn't want to, or is not saying that they want to, just not applying like that kind of thing. And then we have Dollar Sign, who has his version of what's happening in his own like universe of it. Like it's he agrees with 
how she's seeing it, but she he's seeing it with her, with his type of like tease that's going on with him. So I like that. And so number seven is, oh, sorry, let me go back. So in dollar sign, I actually like him in a lot of features. I love his features and almost everything he's done. Um, everything that I've seen him do. And I don't really, I haven't really felt the need to involve myself into his actual music. Like, if he has an album about anything, I have no idea, nor do I want to really get into it. Um, for now, it may change later on. Um, but I do like his features. His features and everything I've seen has been really fun and just kind of mingles perfectly into it. It's like, you know, it just, he sound, his, his sound fits in everything he's done, been featured in. Um, number seven is RPG, which is, stands for Role Play Games, um, featuring Six Black or Black, however you want to pronounce it. I have no idea. I'm going to look it up later on. Um, and this one is very f interesting and fun one. It's pretty much about how it's two stories. It's one of the things I talked about how, like, I love how they have this whole album gives you the full story of what's going on, you know, so you have, like... So you, you will have times where she people will agree with her, like Tay Dolla Sign, or you have the ones where they won't agree with you, which is um, like Nanya, how he kind of he kind of agrees, but he doesn't like want to stop, you know. Whereas this one, she he completely does not agree, and he but it's obviously more of a discussion than an argument because it's obviously she's saying that she wants this type of attention, like she just he doesn't say that he like he doesn't say. A lot of his emotions about like them romantically and so she wants that and on his side it's like how I say it is through action and like and he kind of bring op opens up the relationship a little more about how like they both are kind of in the same background but he, they have different type of baggage they brought into the relationship and how his baggage is a little more deep and like more heavier which blocks him from expressing a lot of emotion and it's so like that and so it's just like they obviously want to stay together and try and reach to a point but it's obviously that there's that part that they're trying to understand about each other which is kind of cool so i really like that it has two stories it has like two sides of the stories number eight is butterfly which is a very relaxed one it's reminds me of a poem because the end has a like a weird poemish rap to it and this one's about kind of like how she wants her him to kind of like lay like tear down all the walls that he has built up and kind of just let him like be vulnerable and be kind of be himself for like a minute you know and so and this is kind of cool and she kind of like it's very gentle with it she's very gentle it's just like like we should be closer and we should we can be closer blah blah, blah and like how like she's like very open it's more like it's a courage it's encouragement more than like complaining you know um and finally, number nine is Love Language. And this one's kind of a mixture, metaphoric, but not metaphoric. Apparently, it was a, it was built to be more of like, I want to know how to speak with you and talk with you with a, since you have a different, you speak a different physical language and I speak a different language, we can kind of go, we're just kind of meet, trying to find a meet middle, you know? And I think that that's also metaphoric to a different one because it's called love language. So I think that they also are trying to figure out on top of that, also figure out how this, the opposite person communicates in love wise, like so that she can kind of either match it or try to kind of like meet in the middle or they can both kind of meet in the middle exactly what they're both or how they both express love. They kind of meet in the middle to express it together, you know? Um, so I like this song, and I love the sound of the song, I love this, I love the, I love the little pluck of the, um, I can't, like, um, mandolin or something, like, it's, it has some, it has some weird, like, little plucking sound to it, um, but yeah, but I do like it, I do, and I love, so, all in all, this EP has been a really good, it's really good with lyric-wise, I kind of, I did a, a different thing with this where I try to listen to the lyrics more than actually listen to it sonically but sonically it sounds good it's it's not too surprising there's no there's no intense like sound of the music like and other than morning glory that has more of a 90s sound everything else pretty much sounds like something you might have heard or something that's not it's kind of like giving you what you want without like but I think she's more I coming across it come across to me that she's more into wants you to listen to the lyrics more than she wants to listen to the beat and i think that's kind of cool 
So if this is how Kalani is, then I'm actually looking forward to see what else she has to talk about. Um, so yeah, so this is it. So that's all of the EP. Um, leave a comment below, tell me what you thought. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you're a hardcore Kilani um, fan, that would be great because I would love to know, like, as a hardcore uh, Kilani fan, what do you think about this EP? So I kind of get a little good, a better, genuine um, understanding of what she's like or if she's changed, she hasn't changed, kind of like that. And I hope everybody having, is having a good Monday. And I know it's raining, it's crazy right now in California, but I hope everybody has a great uh, weekday, and I'll see you guys in the next video.